From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Hello, Sheriff. I can't hear you for the storm. We were cut off before. Hello? Is that you, Sheriff? I said... Hello? You get cut off again, Mr. Dollar? Not this time, Shorty. Somebody cut the wire. The phone's dead. Then we got no way of getting white out. No way of getting help. No, not at the moment. And he's out there in the dark somewhere. He's got a gun and there's no telling what he may try and do. Shorty, get away from that window. Well, we know where he is now and what he intends. Because he just made a try at it. What are you going to do about him? Only thing I can do, Shorty, go get him before he gets me. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar at the Cronin Estate, Wells Falls, New York, to the Home Office, Surety Mutual and Trust Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Cronin matter. Protection of a half-million-dollar necklace. Expense account continued. Item 10, $135. One tweed sport jacket to be purchased on my return. Both lapels and one shoulder ripped by a bullet. Also one pair of slacks to match. Destroyed a few minutes later in the mud, slush, and underbrush in the grounds of the Cronin place while pursuing a suspect who'd already tried twice to kill me and who made a third go at it when I stepped out of the side door of the house. Shorty, away from the door, quick. Whew, boy, that was close. Yeah, he can see the door opening, but he can't see us, not in this mess. He's desperate, he's shooting blind. Look, Shorty, yeah. why don't you go on back in the house? There's no reason for you taking chances like this. You're taking them? With me, it's a job of work. I get paid for it. I told you earlier how I felt about Dolly, I mean. I don't know what Jason Prell's game is, Mr. Dollar, but if it's against her, then I'm against him. I'm staying. All right, it's up to you. Thanks for giving me the gun back. Emergency, that's all. You've got a prison record, Shorty. You know what it means if you're caught with a gun. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> hey, good. I figured Prell would give himself away if he kept that up. I got him spotted now. Where? At the base of that tall pine, a little to the left. Watch for it, the next flash of lightning. There, yeah, yeah, now I see it. I know the one you mean. Then stay here and keep him pinned down. It's a good spot. You've got cover from the wall of the terrace there. What are you going to do? Circle around and come up beside him. Just throw a shot at the base of that pine tree now and then. Keep him tied down. Keep him busy, you got it? Right. And good luck! I left the shelter of the house and started edging through the shrubbery. The undergrowth was a regular jungle. It would have been impossible to slip up on Prell without his hearing if it hadn't been for the storm. Shorty Weber fired now and then at the pine tree. And twice Prell fired an answer. Jason Prell, so-called friend of old Mrs. Cronin, knew I had him tagged. At first I'd been guessing mainly, but he didn't know it. And he'd lost his head and made the guess prove out. And now he was apparently ready to risk murder or death rather than face a prison term. I was within 30 feet of him. He hadn't heard a sound. He was still firing at Shorty over on the terrace. His back was turned partly toward me. He didn't know I was near, so I leveled my gun. Get your hands up, Prell. Drop that gun. You covered. He whirled, peering into the darkness of the bushes, trying to see me. He knew I was close, but he couldn't tell where. He raised his gun, started to turn, and... I'm not quite certain what happened next. The light was bad, and I could hardly see him. Whether he stumbled accidentally or... Or what is something I'll never know. All I know is that when I walked over to him, he was dead. Yeah, he was no good, Mr. Dollar. I always thought so, but Dolly swore by me at her fool. What about Barnaby, her husband? He couldn't stand Prell at first. Later, they got us tickets, thieves. Yeah. Well, it's a mess, Shorty, a real mess. Old things that should have stayed dead and buried on the bottom, they're all coming to the surface now. Tell me something, Mr. Dollar. Yeah? What about Dolly? Is this thing going to kick back on her? Will she get hurt by it? Yeah, Shorty, I'm afraid she will. Pretty badly. It was deep into the night, edging toward dawn, when I got back to the house. I changed out of my wet clothes, went to the game room, and got Dolly's necklace from under a chair cushion. I'd stuck it there when Prell had pulled the main switch and put the lights out. Then I went upstairs to look in on Dolly Cronin, quietly, just to check... But it didn't work out that way. Johnny? 
Is that you? Yeah. I didn't mean to wake you. Oh, you didn't. I've been awake most of the night. Come on in, Johnny. All right. How are you feeling? Oh, just fine. There's nothing wrong with me. I feel fine. Good. Isn't Laura Dean a nice girl? Huh? Yes, she is. I'm glad she came. Company for you, Johnny. Oh, yeah. Quite a storm we had, wasn't it? Oh, it was beautiful. All that lightning, wind, and the thunder. Oh, I haven't seen such a beautiful storm since I was little. Johnny, thought I heard shots a while ago. Shots? Outdoors, off toward the woods somewhere. Oh, it might have been lightning, thunder. Sounded like a gun, like somebody shooting. Well, sound plays funny tricks up here in the mountains. Uh, I guess so, but... Well, I've been thinking back over the past so much that makes the present a little unreal. I'm afraid the past is about all I have left now. Now, don't be so quick to sell this future of yours short. You've got a lot of years yet, good years. Well, I had a lot of good years. Good friends, good times, a good life. And best of all was Barnaby. You loved him very much, didn't you, Mrs. Cronin? I worshipped him. He was perfect. He never did a wrong thing in his life. Now that he's gone, is the one fine memory I always cling to. Oh, if I didn't have that, well, I, I just couldn't go on. Well, then let's hope you never lose that memory. Of course, there were other good friends, too, over the years, like Jason Prell. Hmm. He is so quiet and withdrawn. It takes a long time to get to know him. But he's been such a good friend to me. He's so patient with all this silly ignorance of mine about business problems. Yes, I'm sure he has. I just don't know what I'd do without him. Yeah. Now, don't you think you'd better get some sleep? In a little while. You know, Johnny, it's funny how things work out. In what way? I was born and grew up Right here in this village. Yes, your housekeeper, Miss Atherton, told me the two of you were girls together. We were inseparable. Like I said, I grew up here and then I went away. And Barnaby and I came back and built this house. And we went away again. There were always so many places to go. New things to do. It's a big world, isn't it? And finally, Barnaby came back for the last time. And died here. All alone, poor boy. And now I've come back. The place where I was born. Everything finally comes home. Doesn't it, Johnny? Yes, nearly always. I'm very tired. I think I will sleep now. Be good for you. The necklace, Johnny, do you have it with you? I sure do. Here you are. So beautiful. And so many memories. All so long ago. Put it on me. Will you, Johnny? Of course. Raise up now. Just a little. There. How do I look? Sweet enough to kiss. Well. Nice. You go to sleep now. Yes, sir. I'll only look at the necklace for one minute only. Then I'll take my pills and go to sleep. And then I'll dream up a dream. A great big dream. Good night, dancing darling. It's been a long time since anyone called me that. A long, long time. Good night, Johnny. And thank you. I left her and went downstairs and rustled myself a pot of coffee. I sat down by an east window and drank it cup after cup and watched the morning sun come up. 
Dream a big dream. Well, before many more hours, she was going to need a big dream. There was no way of keeping it from her, all of it. The fact that Jason Prell was dead, shot, that he'd attempted murder and tried to steal a necklace. And worst of all, that her beloved Barnaby had probably been as big a crook as Prell. Is it all right if a girl who can't sleep sits this one out with you? Sure. Pull up a chair, Laura. Like some coffee? Just black, thank you. I guess it wouldn't do much good to ask you what's been going on around here all night. Something has? Like I said, I guess it wouldn't do much good. Here's your coffee. Oh, thanks. That's how I found you, just followed the smell of this coffee. Mm, good. I guess if I said I heard somebody shooting up the place during the storm, you'd just say, really? Never use the word. And I guess if I showed you that broken window over there, you'd say maybe a pigeon flew in. Might, if I happen to think of it. I'm sorry all this kept you awake. Oh, don't apologize. I probably wouldn't have slept anyway. Why not? Guilty conscience? Don't be silly. I didn't even do it. Do what? Whatever it is I'm supposed to feel guilty about. Lying is what I had in mind at the moment. Oh, I do that all the time, but I never feel guilty about it. I just call it making up things. Like claiming you were the niece of Fritzie Morrell, <laughs> Mrs. Cronin's oldest friend. Gosh, went down my windpipe. Like claiming you're Fritzie Morrell's niece. Mostly I drink tea, but you already had the coffee Like made. claiming you're Fritzie... All right, all right. How'd you find out? Nothing very spectacular. She just didn't have a niece. I wasn't sure. But I thought she must. Everybody her age has at least one niece. What was the idea? Well? Well, I lived in the same rooming house she did. She liked me. Talked to me a lot before she died last year. So when the invitation came last week, I got the idea of going as her niece. I didn't mean any harm by it. I just wanted to go to the party. All right, relax. That's about the way I figured it. Well, it turned out to be quite a party, didn't it? I hope I never see another one like this as... Johnny. Johnny, what's wrong with her? It was Miss Atherton. I got up slowly from my chair as she walked toward us and then stopped a few feet from the table. Her eyes were fixed on something far away and the look on her face was strange and grim. I think I knew even before she spoke... Mrs. Cronin is dead. There'll be another intriguing episode in our story of the Cronin matter tomorrow. Tomorrow, the questions and the answers for the living and the dead. The final payoff. And fate itself plays the last trump. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. Mm -hmm.